So he says to us to test the spirits. Test the spirits. Test the spirits. She don't just accept everything. What is it producing in you? What you're hearing, is it increasing your love for God and for God's people? If it is, great. If it is not, let it go. Because one of the responsibilities of a Christian is to increase the love among God's people. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to see to it that, it says, let brotherly love continue. You see, that what he's saying is make it continue. Make, increase brotherly love. Be a part of the process. Let brotherly love continue. It's like when he says, let there be light. It's not a passive thing. It's not God saying, okay, let there be light. No, let there be light. He says, light be. You see, he commands it to come forth. He says, let brotherly, li brotherly love continue. It's not a passive thing. You are part of it. You are making brotherly love to continue. You're insisting on it. You're making sure that everything that is not consistent with brotherly love is removed from our midst. So you insist on the love of God in the church. Not by preaching it, by doing it. By walking in it. By walking in it. And I will say to every pastor, you should, you should, the um, Bible tells us to, to have attention, give attention to the flock. And that is so important. You have to watch the brethren. For example, in groups, maybe like the choir, different groups, you know, we have different, we have different groups in church, different fellowships in church. Make sure you disallow, you disallow tail bearers. That is very, very important. Disallow tail bearers and tail bearing in the house of God. Disallow it. I'll read the scripture to you. In Proverbs chapter 26, read verse 20. He says, Where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. Whenever there's strife in a group, whenever there's strife, no matter how large the group is, no matter how small the group is, I tell you, any strife that is prolonged, especially a strife that goes beyond the month, understand that there is a tail bearer. Because the Bible says, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. He says, and where there is no tail bearer, tail bearer, the strife ceases. When strife continues, it means that there is a tail bearer. And tail bearers don't tell the truth. Tail bearers only twist the truth. See? And then they pollute the minds of others. Then you find... Some people are not coming for choir practice. Some people are not coming to the fellowship meeting. Some people are not coming for this. Some people are not coming that day. And then they start giving generalized excuses. They say there's no love in the church. There's no love in the church. There's no care in the church. They say the pastors don't care. Or oh, the leaders don't care. Oh, we heard this story and the other story and this and that and that. Deal. They have different things. But what was the result? The result was, here was someone who was always enjoying choir and music in church. Here was someone who was always enjoying fellowship in church. Here was someone who was always enjoying the drama group. Here was someone who was always enjoying all these things. Suddenly... He's no longer happy. He's no longer fulfilled. He's no longer interested. Why? The tail bearer. So get the tail bearer out. Is a solution for the strife to cease. That's what you do. Get the tail bearer out. 
tells you that where there's no tail bearer, strife ceases. Let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 8. It says, the words of a tail bearer are as wounds. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. It says, the words of a tail bearer are as wounds. What is the spirit behind a tail bearer? It's the spirit of error, the spirit of deception. That is Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Look at all his names. They are the ones that say that uh, in every rumor there's an element of truth. What was the element of truth in all the rumors about Jesus? All the rumors about Jesus, all the accusations of Jesus, what was the element of truth? The Bible says there was no truth in them. Yet they wrote books which are available today and people are still selling them today and making films based on those books that were written about Jesus in the same time, the same period where you have your Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And people wrote about Jesus at that same time. Wrote nasty things about Jesus. The Bible says, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Don't allow tail bearers in the church. They are usually sent by Satan. And you know, two major times the word tells us about the words of a tail bearer. You know, I just read to you Proverbs 18, 18. If you go to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 22, he tells you the same thing. He says, the words of a tail bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Why is he telling you twice the same thing? That's to show you how serious it is. This tells you how serious it is. Then look at Proverbs, what you do to him. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19. It says, He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. The interesting thing is that not that the secrets are true, but he always acts like he has information. So he has a secret to tell you, a secret that nobody else knows except him. And he's there to tell you what the Queen of England ate for breakfast. And where does he live? You can imagine. How do you know? He says, He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. See, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. That means tail bearers always act like they love you more. See, they flatter with their lips. They act like they love you more. So the Bible says, don't make friends with them. Run away from a tail bearer or cast them out. If you have authority over them, cast them out. If you don't have authority over them, run away. <laughs> and here is the law. In the, in the Old Testament, here was the law. To let you know what God thought about them. He says, Thou shalt not, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16 says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. <laughs> Can you see that? And see the company of those that he lists this with. So read it again. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy, thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. See that if there's something wrong, he says, speak to him, rebuke him. Don't hate him in your heart. And don't go about, he says, up and down. And who is the only other one described as going up and down? Satan. God asked him, where are you coming from? He said, from going to and fro and up and down in the earth. So the spirit of error 
is the spirit of deception, the spirit of falsehood, which is the spirit Satan himself, the great dragon, the old serpent called the devil, Lucifer, right? Good. And he's called the accuser of the brethren. And you should realize that as you develop, and one of the, that's one of the reasons why um, when we teach things like this to our brethren, we are also saving them a lot of heartache in the future. Because what you sow, you reap. If you find yourself sowing discord, Sowing uh, falsehood. It means that you're going to reap the same later on, somewhere in the future. And that means that when it happens to you, you will be defeated. Why? Because you walked with the same, with the same principle. And therefore you cannot win. But those who don't live like that, who don't sow those kind of seeds, it doesn't matter how Satan comes out against them. Because the accuser of the brethren, they didn't say the accuser of some brethren. So everyone will be accused. Somewhere in your life, you're going to have accusations against you. And because they are satanic in nature, there will be false accusations. See? Do you know how many thousands of people, since we started praying, just us, imagine that, since we started praying in 2011, around the world, you've had over 2,000 people released from prison, released from incarceration, because of wrongful judgment, wrongful imprisonment, a travesty of justice, miscarriage of justice, and because we've been praying and there are others who are praying and God has brought many out of prison some of them had spent 30 years 40 years in prison for offenses they never committed one day they just got into trouble they were said to have been at the wrong place at the wrong time and you don't want that to be you somewhere on death row for offenses they never committed. So, you have that accuser of the brethren, you will be accused. It's just a matter of time. And if you don't deal with such things now with the word of God, when your trouble starts, then no one will be helping you because you use the wrong principles before. So stay on the right. Stay in the right direction with God. Stay in God's word. Test the spirits. Test the spirits. 